Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be discussing surgical wounds. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So what is a surgical wound? So a surgical wound is a cut or incision in the skin that is usually made by a scalpel during surgery. So a surgical wound can also be a result of a drain placed during surgery. Um, they really vary greatly in size depending on what type of procedure was done, and they're usually closed with sutures or staples, um, but they're sometimes left open to heal. So there are four types of surgical wounds. Now, these categories depend on how contaminated a wound is, the risk of infection, and where it's located on the body. So a class one, these are considered our clean wounds, no signs of infection or inflammation. Um, they often inv involve the eye, the skin, or vascular system. Class two, so these wounds are considered a clean contaminated. So although the wound might not be showing signs of infection, it is at an increased risk of becoming infected because of its location. So say it's close to the rectum, it's at a higher risk. Um, class three, okay, so this is a surgical wound in which an outside object has come in contact with the skin and has a high risk of infection and is considered a contaminated wound. So for example, a gunshot wound may have contaminated the skin around where the surgical repairs occurred, okay? Then we have our class four. Now this class, of wound is considered dirty contaminated okay so it's come in contact with exposed fecal matter okay so what causes a surgical wound so a surgical wound is created by a surgeon making an incision with surgical instruments such as a scalpel now there is a wide variety of reasons that require surgery and they all are different, okay? So the wound size will depend on the procedure, location of the body, um, even the body type. It, it will affect how large a wound needs to be for that surgery. Okay, so risk factors for surgical wound infections. So any surgical procedure that creates a wound or a break in the skin barrier, they're at risk of infection. So the likelihood of a wound infection after surgery is between one and 3%, okay? So up to three people for every 100 people. Now, risk factors do increase if you have other medical issues, such as diabetes or a weakened immune system, if you smoke, um, older adults, if you're obese, they all increase those risk factors. Now, emergency surgeries, abdominal surgeries, surgeries that last longer than two hours also bring on a higher risk of infection. So what are other symptoms of surgical wound infections? So surgical wounds are frequently monitored to make sure that they are healing properly. Now infections may affect the skin, the tissue under the skin, any implants, they can all become infected, okay? So signs of surgical wound infection include increased pain and redness to the area, delayed healing, presence of pus, foul odor, or an increase in drainage from the wound, okay? Now, in some cases, an infected surgical wound can appear dried out or deeper, okay? Um, fevers can also be a, a common sign for these infections, okay? 
So how are surgical wound infections diagnosed? So a physician can diagnose a surgical wound infection by examining the wound, assessing symptoms, or taking a culture of fluid from the wound, okay? Um, if you want to know more about how to recognize the signs and symptoms of infection, whether it be local or deep in spreading, um, look in the description below and I'll add the link there um, of all the signs and symptoms, okay? So how are surgical wounds treated? So treatment of surgical wounds sometimes depend on the location. Surgical dressings are normally placed over a wound and may need to be changed regularly. It totally depends on the doctor's orders. Now, the skin around the surgical wound, when you're changing the dressing, you need to cleanse that area. So just with some salt water, mild soap, and you may also need to irrigate the wound with salt water. Now, when you're doing this at home, um, because most of the time you're discharged from the hospital, your wound has not healed. So you will have to follow the at-home care instructions that your doctor gives you. Um, and you might need to follow any medication regimen because a lot of times there is pain associated with these um, wounds, okay? So it's essential to follow your at-home care instructions and also please um, go over the list of how to actually change the dressing and um, because that's going to promote healing properly. So complications of surgical wounds, once again, infection. Now these normally start within the 30 days of having surgery. Once again, you're red, painful, hot to touch, pus. To treat the infections or your physician may prescribe an antibiotic and they may open up the wound to clean it out, okay? So if it's been closed, they may actually have to open that wound to clean it out. Um, so what is recovery like for a surgical wound? Reco uh, recovery varies and can last for a few weeks up to months. Um, your surgeon should be able to give you specific information on when you can go back to work, exercise, do your daily routine. So the outlook for surgical wounds is that they heal properly. So just follow the infection control recommendations given to you, how to change the dressing, um, if there's any antibiotics or pain medication, because once again, with pain, um, if we're having a lot of pain, people don't realize they, they don't like to take pain medication, but a wound actually can't heal if we're having a lot of pain. So we wanna make sure that we're controlling that pain also. But just follow the directions given to you, outlined um, on their paperwork, and uh, the wound should heal properly. So that is all that I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful for your daily practice, and I will catch you all in my next video, guys. See ya.